good morning everyone in this class we are going to discuss about db2 so far we have completed cobol and jcl so now only the pending part is db2 before going to talk about db2 we need to know what is database what is database and what is sql okay database versus sql it's like there are some basic points we need to know just see that one so it's like uh, suppose the definition of database is database is nothing but collection of meaningful data okay so if you observe serial number name and marks it is in a particular order and it should be in rows and columns there are three columns and four rows it is available so this is one of the database it's like database is nothing but collection of meaningful data next by using database by using database what are the operations we are going to perform what are the operations we are going to perform why database is normally is required so in order to in order to store the data we are going to use database in order to store and retrieve we are going to use database so mainly we are going to use crud operations here crud operations c means create or insert the data r means read or retrieve u means updating the existing data d means deleting the unnecessary data so here if you observe here so what are the operations we are performing just crud operations crud so crud means create or insert r means read or retrieving u means update or delete sorry u means update d means delete okay that's fine so in market okay in market so we have we have lot of database systems are available in our market lot of database systems are available so what are those suppose oracle is one of the database system mysql is one of the database system okay db2 is one of the database system mongodb so it is one of the database system so it's like there are so many databases there are so many database systems are available in the market but the purpose of these databases sir so what is the main purpose purpose of this dbms database management systems to store and retrieve data so this is the main purpose this is the main purpose so why this many databases see that is depends like suppose if you take a person so one person is having iphone and one person is using uh, samsung there is another person is using realme the same way in your current organization or some other organizations what they are doing okay so they are convenient they are using their own databases or they are going to buy a license for this different database systems this different database systems but the purpose is same see oracle also we are going to store the data and retrieve the data mysql also we are going to store and retrieve the data but this is their convenience they are going to use it okay but here coming to main frames okay coming to main frames we are using db2 so this is one of the database system through cobol we are going to interact with this db2 so this is also ibm product only ibm product this is also ibm product so mainframes also ibm product and 
this is also ibm product okay now you have one clear idea on this database then coming to coming to sql is sql and database both are same no is sql and database both are same database is nothing but collection of meaningful data database is nothing but collection of collection of meaningful data so this is simple definition okay for database now what is sql or sql okay what is sql or sql sql stands for structured query language structured query language what is sql sql stands for structured query language in order to in order to perform in order to perform crud operations crud operations in database management systems in any database we are using sql sql and database again i'm telling sql and database both are not same database is nothing but collection of meaningful data and there we can store and retrieve the data okay so that is for storing purpose and retrieving purpose so how we are going to store and retrieve okay we are using we are using sql the simple definition of sql so there is another definition in order to in order to communicate in order to communicate in order to communicate with any db we are using sql so sql is like this is for communication purpose so if you want to interact if you want to interact with the database system we need sql by using sql by using sql by using sql we can connect with any of the databases any of the databases either you can use with oracle or mysql or db2 db2 okay there are some people will ask sometimes okay is database and sql are same no you should not say like okay both are not same what is database database is nothing but collection of meaningful data in order to store in order to store we are going to use database systems what is sql in order to communicate if you want to interact if you want to interact with the database systems we are using sql so this is a simple definition of sql okay next these are the examples of database management systems we have already discussed about this one and sql so it's a command based language it is a command based language and it is not case sensitive and every command it will get end with semicolon and also every command 
it will start with a verb and it is similar to english language only it's like a cobol so you can easily understand what is happening and it is developed in the year of 1972 mr card okay by ibm developer by ibm developer so here so here there are there are five sub languages of sqls are available so what are those ddl dml and drl and tcl and dcl ddl is nothing but data definition language data definition language so in order to create alter drop truncate and rename we are going to use this ddl commands but in our main frames we are not going to do this access because there is a separate team admin team they are going to take care of creating the tables altering the tables and dropping and truncate and renaming okay so here no need to bother about this next coming to dml what is dml data manipulation the name itself it is there okay we are going to manipulate the data in order to manipulate the data we are going to use these commands insert update and delete so here we are going to involve so we need to know we need to learn how we need to use insert and update and delete okay dml next coming to coming to drl data retrieval language okay retrieval so the name itself it is retrieve or fetch select these three are same okay in drl or dcl we are going to use select so here also most of the operations most of the logics we are going to build by using select only by using select only so mainly as a developer you are going to involve in dml and drl next tcl transaction control so in order to commit or roll back we are going to use tcl commands next dcl dcl so this is a language data control so whenever you are going to join in any of the you know whenever you are going to join any company or any organization so as soon as you joined you don't have access so there is an admin team they are going to give the access to you okay uh, that is like grant so you want to they want to remove access for you they are going to use revoke okay they are going to use revoke so how many sub languages we have five ddl dml drl and tcl and dcl and mainly we are going to involve in dml and drl so here we need to know select insert and update and delete so if you know these four commands these four commands you can easily survive and you can easily code you can easily code in db2 programs db2 programs okay next what is table so table is table contains rows and columns rows and columns so that is called table how we are going to declare a tables so by using data types by using data types in cobol we have some data types right the same way here also we have some data types in order to create a table in order to create a table just observe this uh, query create table table name create table table name the column name and data type and size the same way the column name data type and size column name data type and size okay so anyway the creation of tables and all the dba team is going to take care no need to bother about that one but you have to know what are the data types it is available so char in order to store characters we are going to use char data type 
next worker worker so it's like alphanumeric in order to store numeric data as well as alphabets we are going to use worker so here we have number sometimes we are going to use number sometimes we are going to use decimal here in order to store any decimal points it's like amount related things we are going to use decimal over there next we have date and timestamp like this there are uh, six to seven data types are available but here our main motto is you need to learn what is database and what is sql and what are the examples of database management systems okay and how many sub languages of sql so these are the basic things these are the basic things you need to know before going to start db2 before going to start db2 okay so i have already shared the link okay yesterday's class i think crud operations how to perform select insert and update and delete select insert update and delete so if you know these four commands these four commands our life will be very easy to write the codes write the codes okay okay you are going to you are going to start a project so in that project there are some db2 programs we need to write you need to write So in that case, what we need to do? In that case, what are the steps? What are the steps we need to follow? What are the steps we need to follow? So the basic things. Just remember how to write DB2 programs. To write DB2 programs. so you know already how to write sql sorry how to write cobol so the same way we need to write the same way we need to write all this db2 program also but we can observe inside the program inside the program if we find if we find any sql statements sql statements sql statements that is called cobol db2 program cobol db2 program if you don't have any sqls if you don't have any skills that is called that is called pure cobol program pure cobol program or non db2 program non db2 program non db2 program in db2 cobol db2 cobol db2 we can find we can find sql ca i'll tell you what is this sql ca just observe we can find sql ca 
if this keyword if this keyword if this keyword is present present in our program that is called over dbt or dbt program so there are two points either you can find any sql statement or sql ca sql ca okay so that is called cobalt db2 program that is called cobalt db2 program so all the sql statements all the sql statements will start with exec sql and end exec end exec end sql sql if you observe this one if you observe this one if you want to write if you want to write any sql any skills what are things mandatory exec sql and end sql is a mandatory this is a mandatory thing so inside this one we are going to write all our skills all our skills okay i'll take sample program i'll take sample program which we have done it in last classes okay just observe this one is this is this db2 program no i am going to search it here type sql ca you can see here can't find the text sql ca so that means it is not a sql program okay there is another way okay sql okay this is also not a sql program okay so this is how we can able to identify whether it is a cobalt db2 program or pure cobalt program so this is a pure cobalt program so this is not a db2 program in order to in order to add in order to make a make as a cobalt db2 the first step is the first step is we need to add sql ca the first step is we need to add sql ca the first step is we need to add so we need to add sql ca in cobol program in cobol program so in order to add any skills i already explained exec sql and end sql in between in between we are going to write we are going to write sql statements here sql statements here. so this is how this is how we are going to add this is how we are going to add sql ca here sql ca so what is this sql ca so the first step if you want to write any cobol program sorry if you want to write any cobol db2 program we need to include sql ca in our cobol program okay sql ca sql ca is a mandatory sql ca is a mandatory so why why this sql ca came into the picture just observe here just observe sql 
एसकेल सी ए स्टैंड फॉर एसकेल कम्युनिकेशन एसकेल कम्युनिकेशन एरिया एसकेल कम्युनिकेशन एरिया सो इट कंटाइंस इट कंटाइंस इट कंटाइंस SQL codes, SQL error codes, SQL errors, and the SQL states. So, what is this SQL code? What is this SQL code and SQL errors and SQL state? Suppose. Suppose we are going to run. Suppose we are going to run one SQL here. Just observe. Just observe. So I'm going to run. I'm going to run this SQL. See, I'm getting some error. I'm getting some error. Okay. What is this error code? One zero four six. There is some error, okay? One zero four six. No data was selected or whatever it is. So here it is a graphical user. You can easily identify what is the error we are getting. What is the error we are getting? Okay. But in our main frames, but in our main frames, SQL CA is going to handle all the SQL codes and SQL errors, and what is the state of SQL? So SQL CA is a mandatory. The first step we need to add SQL CA in COBOL program. Okay. In order to make as a DB2. So what is SQL CA? SQL communication area. It contains SQL code, SQL errors, and SQL state. So when it is useful, so whenever you are going to execute, execute our SQL. Our SQL. It will store. It will store error codes. If you observe here, one zero four six is the error code. And so, what is the error message? So this is the no database selected. Okay, no database selected. These things will get stored in a SQL code and SQL errors and SQL states. So that is the reason we are going to use this one. Okay, I am going to show you this one. Just observe. See here, here we are executing, we are executing these SQL statements, these SQL statements. As soon as we execute this SQL statement, so what is happening? So how to identify? Hey, Cobol, whether my SQL is successfully executed or not. So what I told you? So we have a SQL CA inside the set, inside that SQL CA. We have SQL codes, SQL error messages, and SQL states. Correct. So, as soon as if you execute this one, we are going to evaluate SQL code. We are going to evaluate SQL code. It's like we are checking. We are checking the SQL code. So, if the SQL code is zero, the SQL code is zero. So that means, that means. Our SQL is ran successfully. If it is when other apart from zero, we are going to consider as SQL is failed. SQL is failed. So where it is going to store this SQL code and SQL error messages and SQL states? So that contains in a SQL CA. SQL CA. Okay. So this is very very important. This is very very important. For interviews also, they will ask, "What is SQL CA?" Just you can say like, "Okay, SQL CA is a SQL communication area. So it contains SQL codes and errors and SQL states. As soon as if we execute our SQL in our COBOL program, it will get stored the SQL codes and error messages and states. Based on these SQL codes, we are going to decide. We are going to decide." Whether we need to go with 
further process or not further process or not this is how this is how we can check whether our sql is executed successfully or not this is how we are going to check our sql is successfully executed or not so this is the first step okay first step we are going to add it in working storage section this one we are going to first step we need to add sql in coval program under working storage section working storage section this is going to handle all our sql codes all our sql codes so this is how we are going to declare so the first step is done the first step is so how we are going to define this is how we are going to define okay next next our wish so what is the logic so the logics we are going to write it in procedure division procedure division suppose suppose i am going to read the data from input file input file after reading after reading just observe here after reading i want to i want to insert insert the data into my table so we are going to write all the logics all the logics in procedure division so just i am going to copy paste instead of going to type everything okay just up so here so exec sql and end sql okay fine insert into student but here our case is employee insert into employee this is our table this is our table so what is the first field employee number employee name so employee salary so i don't want to store any address and all okay employee salary okay is sell and values so where the values are going to store it where the values are going to store it so normally what we will do if you want to insert if you want to insert just observe this one we are going to hard code we are going to hard code we are going to hard code the values we are going to hard code the values if you observe this one insert into regions region id region name values 1 comma europe again 2 comma americas so here we know the value so that's why we are going to hard code but in our program but in our program what we are doing we are reading the data from a file we are reading the data from file and we are moving into we are moving into working storage variables we need to use we need to use this working storage variable because every time the values will get change every time this values will get change okay this working storage variables we are going to give it here we are going to give it here this working storage variables this working storage variables normally we are going to call it as we are going to call it as host variables we are going to call it as host because these are the values hosting here hosting here okay these are all 
host variables host variables so instead of going to hard code we are using host variables okay these host variables we need to declare host variables will come from dcl gen we'll talk about later dcl gen or working storage section working storage section so it's like mapping it's like mapping so in table in table suppose employee number employee number is 10 characters so how are we going to define this one pick 9 of pick x of 10 okay this is called table mapping that's it employee name employee name is 50 characters in our table employee name pick x of 50 so this is the same mapping okay in table based on our table we are going to define our variables in our cobol program okay that's fine so this we are going to call it as host variables instead of going to give hard code like the static values we are going to pass dynamic values here dynamic values here okay that's good next after writing sql after writing sql we need to we need to handle exceptions this is called exception handling exception handling or error handling error handling so we are not sure right whether this sql is executed successfully or not we are not sure so that is the reason we are going to use evaluate sql code so how this sql code will come i already explained i already explained first we are going to define this sql ca this sql ca is going to take care whenever the sql statement is executed whenever this sql statement is executed it will get store it will get store all the sqls over there all the sql codes and sql errors and sql states now after execution of this sql statement sql ca sql ca is going to take care of sql codes so if it is zero when zero it's successful when 803 okay so there is a primary key so this is how we are going to handle it so if you don't handle this one also it will go to directly when other when other if the skill is executed successfully it will go here if the skill is failed it will go to when other so that the user can able to understand hey our skill is failed i need to fix this one i need to fix this one okay so this is one of the approach and also this is one of the tasks suppose suppose there is a task there is a task okay there is a task we need to read we need to read data from data from files and we need to insert into need to insert into employee table employee table okay employee table so what are the steps it is required what are the steps it is required so you know already how to declare a file and read the file okay this is how we are going to declare the files this is a file definition then after file definition what we are going to do just we are doing file open and file process and file close so up to this part you guys are clear but in order to insert the values into a table what we need to do we need to add sklca this is the first step and next step next step very simple 
after reading after reading the values okay after reading the values okay just to go to where we are reading okay read employee input attend and not attend and perform okay we are performing this one okay good so here come to this pair either you can write separate pair for this one or else you can write this logic this logic so this is also simple only execute sql and end sql in between what we need to do insert into so what are the values we need to insert insert into column names and values here we need to mention host variables so host variable is nothing but ws working storage variables now these variables contains values 101 or 10 sorry whatever it is 101 or rasa whatever it is employee salary 67000 okay it will be like this it will be like this so after execution of this one after execution of this one so we need to handle errors we need to handle errors we need to know our sql is executed successfully or not so that's why we are going to write you can write if statement also if sql code equal to 0 that means success else fail but in some scenarios we are going to handle lot of sql codes lot of sql codes either 0 100 okay these things and all we'll talk about later so in that case we are going to use evaluate so this is better approach to use this is a better approach to evaluate all the sql codes evaluate sql code when zero okay successful go to another para when another okay sql is failed you can abort the program you can abort the program okay you can abort the program so this is how this is how we can implement our db2 programs db2 programs what is the first step sql ca we need to add and sql statements we need to add in procedure division wherever it is required so the same way suppose if you are going to use select you can you can write select statements but this is common exec sql and end sql and we need to handle all the error codes over there so that's why i ask you to watch the video for trad operations for trad operations like you need to know how to use insert and update and delete and select and select okay so this is how we can implement so that's it for today i am going to give some interview questions interview questions here just prepare the answer for this interview questions the first one what is database and sql and the examples of examples of databases okay so this is one question next question how to identify how to identify whether it is db2 program or non db2 program non db2 program next question what is sql ca and how to add sqls in our cobol okay in our cobol and before going to this one how many sub languages okay how many sub languages how many sub languages available in sql okay how many sub languages available in sql like ddl dml okay so all these four questions we have discussed okay we have discussed already we have discussed already just go through this video and just prepare the answers for this one also 
also if you are not completed this video just complete this crowd operations this is very very important crowd operations okay okay that's it for today we'll meet in a tomorrow's class